Good evening, Lizzie boys, and welcome back to my channel. Today, the creature from the Black Lagoon has been listed to Mattel Creations. Not yet made available. A lot of people got confused by the sold out thing. They do that every time they put a new item on their website. It will say sold out so that nobody can purchase it until the release date, which is April 26th. Unless you're in the fan club, because fan club members get early access to purchase one doll, rather than two, on the 25th. Therefore, the fan club membership finally has a purpose, other than just giving us one doll. One extra doll. <laughs> but yeah, we've got tons of stock photos to go over, we've got to look at our box, and yeah, without further ado, let's just dive right in. <laughs> dive. Get it? Because she's, she's a fucking creature. Yesterday, the only photos of this doll we had was this shot of her legs, as well as these existing uh, pictures of her, of her sculpt, which had actually been leaked. Um... Mattel doesn't like when things like this leak. So here she is, the creature. This picture is a little blurry because for some reason it just would not save normally to my phone, but the rest of them aren't. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is the creature alongside her stand. That's right, that's her doll stand. For once, they're giving a Skelector a unique stand, which I'm very happy about. That's really something they should have been doing from the beginning, because with the price point that Skelectors are at when they don't come with accessories, it's a bit insulting to be paying $65 for just Elvira by herself in a much smaller box than we're used to getting. Still salty about that, even though I like the Elvira's collector. She's very pretty and I'm happy to have her. But um, yeah, I just think giving the characters a unique stand like this just really elevates the doll itself. You know, like this is way more fun than just giving this doll a standard black Monster High stand. It's cool, I like how it holds her by the leg, and allows you to pose her as if she's swimming. It's pretty cool. So, the doll herself. I really, really like how her face turned out. And I like the colors used for her hair. I like the dark green, and I really like the yellow um, streaks. It just, it's visually interesting, you know? It's more interesting than making her hair like a solid color. Adding an accent like that, that makes sense, adds to the swampy... Well, she's not like from a swamp, she's from a lagoon, but, you know, like the kind of, um, lagoony vibe? I don't want to say that. I don't want to say lagoony. <laughs> Sounds like a bad nickname for Laguna from, from Monster High. But yeah, her face is really fun. I really like the pops of red added by her lips as well as by her makeup, which I guess you could say that's orange, but there's also orange, like, in her eye as well as red. You know, basically, I just like the pops of color that her face adds, because other than that, this doll is unfortunately kind of monochromatic. They used the shade of green that is her skin tone for a lot of her pieces. For example, the bracelets as well as the boots. And that does make sense. The creature from the Black Lagoon, I'm just going to call it the creature for the rest of the video, but um, the creature is typically a very monochromatic character. He's one color. He doesn't wear clothes. So adapting that to a female doll who wears clothes in a fashion doll line, obviously you're going to have to, like, try to make it look like these things are part of her body, I guess, even though they're not, you know, just to, like, really add the creature vibes. <laughs> uh, the hands appear to be a unique sculpt. When I first saw them, I thought that they might have just been... What's her name? Um... What's her name? Lorna. I thought they were Lorna's hands, but they're definitely not. They seem to be a new sculpt with a lot of, like, scales. <laughs> uh, the body does kind of remind me of Viperines, though, so I wouldn't be surprised if they had reused uh, the texture of Viperine's scaly skin here. It does look- it looks familiar to me. It might also be the same texture as Jinifier, honestly, I'm not sure. But overall, I like what I'm seeing. I think this doll is really cool. I like the way they adapted everything. And overall, she's just pretty. Like, I really do think this doll is pretty. When um, when they announced that they were doing the creature, I'll admit I didn't feel too, like, excited for how it would turn out. I was like, oh, it's either going to be ugly or they're going to pull a Greta. And by pull a Greta, I mean take the ugly source material and really monster high if I it, you know? And I feel like that's what they did with the creature. Like, this looks like a monster high character to me. Maybe not as much of a student as, like, um, 
for example, Greta did. I really liked Greta because she looks like a Monster High student. Like, the way she's dressed, that's 100% the way a Monster High student would dress. This does feel like it would belong in, like, a lot, like a themed collection, like Power Ghouls, maybe. Yeah, you know, she's kind of giving a superhero. Like, she's got the headpiece on, kind of looks like a big headdress that a superhero would wear. Is that what they're called? A headdress? I don't, I don't know. But you know, they, you know, like Scarlet Witch, for example, how she's got like that, like big headpiece on. It reminds me of that, you know, like something like a superhero would wear. And then she's got the boots, she's got the bodysuit and the train coming off of the bodysuit, you know, and especially like the chest plate type piece around her neck. Yeah, it's really giving superhero to me. <laughs> but yeah, overall, I think she's a very visually interesting doll, even though, again, I do sort of have an issue with her being so monochromatic, but again, it just comes from the creature itself. That's how the creature is. The creature is not wearing clothing. He's all one color for the most part because that's just how he looks, you know? <laughs> so I understand that they were trying to emulate that while also adding some, like, palette diversity in terms of, like, color by, like, adding yellow, adding red in her face. Like, I see what they were going for, and I like it. Uh, this doll was designed by Rebecca Shipman. She, I believe, takes the reins on most, if not all, collectors. Uh, that's Rebecca, by the way, and I think she did a good job here. I really like this doll overall, so let's take a look at her box now. So here is the packaging. I'll admit this photo specifically is gorgeous. I really love this picture. It, it just looks cool. It looks good to me. This is what she looks like in the box. I like it. I like what I'm seeing. Um, I am annoyed with the way they did her train. Like, it looks like they did that thing where they just, like, attach it to the side of the box. And I hate when they do that. <laughs> I hate when they pierce, like, a thin material, like, um, like a lace like that with those little ties to keep it in place. Something Mattel does sometimes that I appreciate is, like, they use, um, thread. Like, they stitch it to the box. So maybe they'll do that here. I don't know. But yeah, the creature looks pretty good in the box. I like it. It's a good box. It's a good um package. Yeah, you got the you got the flaps there and then you got the box. Yeah. One thing I noticed is that there is no like description on the box. I'm sure like when we actually get to see this doll in person, there will be a description on the back, but according to the listing, this is the front and this is the back. Like, I don't know, they didn't show us the interior of the box, like, because usually there's, like, a cover sometimes, like, sometimes there's, like, a box cover. No, that was only with, like, that's only with a couple of them, like, only Annabelle and Jack and Sally have, like, a box, like, sleeve over it. Yeah, the description should be visible if the doll has one, but, but there isn't one. I don't know, but they did uh, put a nice picture of the creature on the side of the box, so... That's cool. I always liked when they did that. Overall, I really like the box. It's pretty basic collector stuff, but again, this picture, just something about it looks so good to me. Maybe it's like the high exposure. I don't know, but I like it. All in all, I think the creature is a very strong first collector of this year because I'm honestly surprised this is the first one of this year. Last year, we got like two in the first six months of the year from um, Elvira in January, and then Chucky and Tiffany in May. So I'm surprised it took this long. It took until April to get our first one of this year, especially when there's two others that we know about. But you know, we don't have to talk about those now. It's just a Wednesday and Morticia two pack and a Hocus Pocus three pack. I'm probably gonna skip that one. I don't give a shit about Hocus Pocus, sorry. But yeah, the creature I think is a very strong design. I really, I really don't, now that I've seen her, I can't envision her looking any different. Like, everything about her just makes sense to me. She's a lagoon monster. She lives in a lagoon. She she swims in the water. Of course she'd be wearing, like, a little bodysuit, like a little swimsuit, you know? Like, <laughs> it just makes sense. Of course she's, like, dressed kind of sleek to move through the water fast. Too much fabric and she'd, like, be stuck underwater forever. She wouldn't drown because she's she has gills, but... Like, she wouldn't really be able to get up, would she? <laughs> It'd be like that painting of the woman who, like, drowns in her big dress. What's that called? Like, the death of Ophelia or something? I don't even... I don't know. 
I just know they referenced it on BoJack Horseman with Sarah Lynn. But yeah, I like the creature. Uh, would I give her a 10 out of 10? Probably not. I do wish the green was darker. Like, the green chosen for her skin should be, like, kind of like a duller green, I would say. I feel like it's a bit too vibrant to really match what the creature looks like, but I do like the new interpretation. I think the best collectors are the ones where they really, like, take creative liberty with the design. In my opinion, the two most boring collectors are the Grady twins, because it's just the same doll twice, but that's, we're leaving that off the list, um, and Dracula, as well as the, um, Bride of Frankenstein 2 pack. Bride of Frankenstein is my number one least favorite collector, just because I think it's really boring. They took, like, no creative liberty with the design. Dracula, I said was one of my least favorites, but I'm not gonna lie, I actually kind of like Dracula, so we're gonna retract that statement. Dracula was cool. They gender bent Dracula, made her a girl, and she slayed for it. Creative liberty was taken. They made Dracula a woman. And the same thing happened here. They took creative liberty with the existing property and made the character, they gender bent her and gave her a really cool outfit. I think the best collectors are the ones that obviously pay homage to the original source material, but also do their own thing. That's why I like Pennywise. Pennywise is another gender bend. It's why I like Beetlejuice. Again, Beetlejuice was gender bent. And I love Greta. I will always love Greta. She's one of the best collectors because of how they took Liberty and changed her design to better suit the Monster High style. And again, I feel like that's what was done here. And to me, it works well. It makes sense. I like this doll and I'm looking forward to getting her. I am a bit annoyed with the way they decided to do the early access for the fan club though. It's a great thing. I'm really glad that they're that they are doing that, but you can only order one during the early access period rather than the usual two. Now, usually, since my mom and I both collect dolls, we decide to order together. We get one fan club membership to share, and then if we both want a doll, we order both of them together to save on the shipping. So when you have to order one on the 25th, like if you want to order one early on the 25th with your fan club membership, you have to pay shipping there. And it seems like if you want to order a second one on the general release day, the next day on the 26th, you'll have to pay shipping again. So it's a bit unfortunate in that regard, you know? But again, I know some people get really mad if you even mention ordering two, even though I have to level with you guys. Private collectors ordering two dolls is not the problem. The problem is the people who use bots to buy like 60 of the dolls. Have you guys seen those pictures of resellers with garages absolutely just filled to the brim with Jack and Sally's? And they were posting them publicly on Mercari. These people are proud of what they do. So yeah, basically what I'm saying here is you guys need to calm down a little when somebody orders two of a doll. Like, again, I only order two because I'm sharing it with my mom. She gets the one, I get the other one. But, yeah, if somebody wants to order two because they really like a doll, they want to keep one in the box and they want to have one out of the box, that's fine. That's really not an issue. Again, the issue will always be the resellers buying up 60-plus of these dolls to resell. So, yeah, just had to get that off my chest. Rants aside, though, I like this doll. I'm interested in hearing what you guys have to say, so feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Do you like her? Do you hate her? Let me know. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!